was a trip down memory lane. Riding an XR400R last week, <laughs> for the first time in 20 years. The first model came out in 1996. It was a great bike in its day. Bulletproof, heaps of mid-range power, long travel suspension, relatively light. I had an absolute ball on mine. It was capable on and off-road, incredibly reliable. The only real known issue was some could be tricky to kickstart once they were hot, but I never had that issue. It was definitely a wheelie machine too. Excuse the old footage, <laughs> but this was filmed before action cams were even available. Filmed to tape in glorious Technicolor. Plenty of guys were racing the XR400s too. Not surprising given the massive popularity of the XR600 in events like Baja. But everything was about to change. The era of the mainstream high-performance four-stroke was about to kick in, with the Yamaha WR400 in 1998 and KTM 400 EXC in 2000. I can still remember riding a friend's brand new 400 EXC, one of the first in Australia. I jumped off the XR and he handed me the Austrian pumpkin. I was staggered at how light, smooth and powerful it was. And I realised the days of the XR400 being a great dirt bike were over. However, the Honda was still a great dual sport bike and kept selling well. But then the Suzuki DRZ400 emerged with water cooling, more power and an electric start. It became incredibly popular. But instead of updating the XR400, Honda simply gave up in 2004 and discontinued it. Why? Who knows? It would be great to be a fly on the wall at those Honda marketing meetings. <笑>何がどう時代の要請に合わなくなって<笑> In 2005, Honda released a Motard version with an electric start, but they detuned the engine and it never seemed to take off. The XR engine continued to live on in a model called the Honda NX4 Falcon, made in Brazil, which is actually fuel injected and has an electric start and a big fuel tank. It would probably sell quite well, but it's only available in South America. Everyone will have different opinions about the XR400, but I wonder if the turn of the century is when Honda really started to lose the plot with their off-road bikes in many respects. Suzuki has sold a huge number of DRZ400s over the past two decades. Why didn't Honda update the XR400 and cash in as well? What do you guys think? Has Honda made some weird decisions over the years? Should the XR range have continued? Keen to hear what you think.